Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harris and I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books and today we are discussing October. So, what I'm going to talk to you guys about what books I've read, I'm going to talk to you about what videos that I've made, I'm going to talk to you about how the channel has performed. Um, and I don't, Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews always gives like life updates in these and I actually don't think I have any life updates. My life update is that I still have a six, five month old baby and I'm not doing anything with my life. Um, the other update, I guess, is that this is being film, fo filmed on a new phone, so um, hopefully the quality is getting better. Uh, you'd think it would be. The phone is two years newer. Anyway, so what have I been reading this month? So I actually only finished two books this month. Um, one of those was Return to Adan, which I gave a five out of five. And I think it's currently the front runner for my favourite book I've read this year. The next book I read, what, and I've recorded a full review for, for Return of Adan, by the way. And uh, Return of Adan? Return to Adan. I've full, recorded a full review, and I think that um, mostly, you know, you can't watch that review if you haven't read the first two books. Sorry, I do have to discuss stuff that happens in the first two books. Um, however, the thing that I will say is um, that trilogy has shot up in my estimation after reading that final book, and I really, really loved it. So if you are looking for something that is kind of like that classic fantasy seen through a modern lens, um, then I would really recommend it. If you're a fan of writers like John Gwynn and Robin Hobb, I see elements of both of those authors in this trilogy. So if those authors are your jam, if you if you like that kind of classic fantasy, um, but with more of a kind of a... It's not like Grimdark, but it's not Sanderson. So it's got a bit of grit to it. It's got a bit of... Um, it's got just some fantastic storytelling, some great world building, a really good soft magic system that I love. Um, so if that's the sort of thing that you're in, in for, in two... I would really recommend Return to Adan. After Return to Adan, I moved straight on to Orbital by Samantha Harvey. This is, um, I thought this was a sci-fi book, but it's not really. It's just literature, literary fiction set on a space station, the International Space Station. And um, this book is like 120 pages, and it's meant to take like, the audiobook is like four hours long or something, and it's meant to take like, when I started the Kindle, it was like, this will take you two hours to read. So I started reading it, and I got to the, like, 35% mark, I think, maybe halfway point, and it was saying now that it was going to take me three hours to read. So the timing was just going up and up and up and up, which never happens to me. It always goes down on Kindle books. Um, so I was like, obviously, I'm struggling with this. Um, I think it was maybe too thinky for me, um, and I DNF'd it. Um, there are very few books um, that I will say, like, I'm DNFing, I'm probably not going back to that. Um, uh, but Orbital is probably one of those. The likelihood that I will go back to Orbital is incredibly low. Um, it took me, to read that 35% of this 130-page book, took me, like, a week. Um, it was just not the thing I wanted to read when I was picking up my uh, Kindle. So I decided just put it down completely. Next up, I read... Path of Daggers by Robert Jordan. This I rated a 4 out of 5. You'll see my review came out on Monday where I kind of discuss why it was not as good as the last few books for me. Um, essentially, it was really, really good. Characters good, story good, pacing good. The thing that I felt was that it felt like there was something missing. Um, it felt like, I don't know... These books have become very episodic since, like, uh, what's the last one that wasn't really episodic at all? <sighs> Shadow Rising, I guess, is probably the last one that felt like it had a really strong beginning, middle, and end that didn't bleed off. Um, so the books have become very episodic now, and I find that what that means is we don't tend to get, like, the satisfaction of that beginning, middle, and end of the story the kind of it's kind of all middle um and there are some endings to some plot lines 
but I think this book has probably the least of those. Um, and in fact, maybe I had to. I think the only storyline that is ended in this book is right at the beginning. Like it ends a story from a previous book, like in the first third, um, like sub story, side story, kind of sort of thing. Um, so good book. I really enjoyed reading it. Did feel a bit like there was just some sort of flavour missing, you know? Um, so that's why I ended up rating it a 4 out of 5. Um, I, I still loved it. So I want that to be clear. And 4 out of 5 is a really good score for a book. Um, next up, I started reading Death Tax by Andrew Gibbler. I decided to shelve this one. So I was listening to it on audio. And I got 25% in and realised that I had been too distracted and not really paying enough attention to the book, and I didn't really know what was going on. Um, I didn't probably help that I started reading this on my brand new phone while I was trying to set up the phone and, like, you know, get everything how I wanted. And a lot. so what happened there, really, was that that ended up with me going, like, well, I actually don't know what's going on. I've just been focusing on my phone, so... Why don't I, um, lost my train of thought, why don't I shelve it? So I decided to put it away, and I will probably pick it back up after reading Wind and Truth, I think, in December, because that will give me the time to forget the 25% that, where I was half paying attention, um, and it will feel like reading it again anew, and I'm going to be eyeball reading it as well, rather than audiobooking it, because um, I wanted to exclusively audiobook this one, and I've decided that was an error. Next up, I started reading a Marvel book, which is an alternate universe take on um, one of my favourite characters, Spider-Man, and um, the Scarlet Witch. So this book is called What If Wanda Maximoff and Peter Parker Were Siblings. I have not finished this book. Um, currently, I'm feeling between a 4 and a 5 out of 5. I'm really enjoying this book. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I've named my son after Spider-Man. I'm literally wearing a Spider-Man t-shirt for this discussion. Um, I think you can tell that I am probably very biased to get towards this book. Um, currently, I think it might scrape into my top 10 of the year. Um, just has to nail the ending. Um, it's mostly from the Scarlet Witch's point of view, which I've really enjoyed. Um, and Peter Parker is... A big part of the story but not the main focus um, it's just really good it's a really good reimagining and um, a really good alternative view on that story so one of the things that I really like in uh, in stories is when they take something that you know and then they kind of give it that little twist um, one of the big things that I really liked about Watchmen the comic is that uh, Alan Moore was like right if a superhuman existed in this state, then how would the world be different? And it extrapolated out from there. So in Watchmen, you have America winning the Vietnam War. You have electric cars being popularised in the 80s because the chemicals that were needed to produce high-capacity batteries were invented by Dr. Manhattan much sooner than they were in our lifetime. And there's all this sort of stuff that he has kind of been like, well, if this, if this happened... How would that change the world? And I think that what Sean and Maguire has done with what if Wanda Maximoff and Peter Parker were siblings is gone, well, if Wanda was taken out of the environment where she was raised on Mount Wondergore, if she was taken out away from her brother, taken away from Magneto, how would her life be different? And how would the universe be different around her? So we have a slightly different version of Peter Parker. He's grown up with a sister rather than by himself. We get a different version of uh, Pietro, Quicksilver, um, because he's grown up without a sister. And they're very codependent in the comics. Like, Wanda and Pietro are extremely codependent. So, really very interesting. Um, the review for that will be out on Monday. I've got, like, less than 10% left to read. Um, it says less than an hour on my Kindle, so I will be finishing that this afternoon. Next up, the let's talk about the month as a whole. So my favourite book of the month, the best book of the month, the book of the month award, very obviously is going to go to Return to Adan. 
Um, as I said, it's currently my front runner for book of the year. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, no notes. Absolutely loved it. Um, read the series, then watch all my reviews because most of them spoil the previous book in some way because that's the way that Philip has written the series means that basically the entire premise rides on things that happened in the previous books. Um, so it's very hard to discuss this book spoiler free. Sorry. Um, my best performing video was my Kindle Paperwhite review. So um, I reviewed the Kindle Paperwhite last month, um, which uh, was an e-reader that I have kind of stopped using. And I mostly now tend to use my books Go Color 7. Uh, there will be a review for that coming at some point, uh, maybe in November. Um, I want to make sure that it's. I'm not just putting Kindle videos out all the time, um, but uh, yeah, I probably will be doing a review of that in November, December, before the end of the year. I'd like to do a review on that because it is my favourite e-reader and I'd like to talk to you guys in depth about it. So the worst performing video... Is kind of so. I made a video this week that has only got 56 views, which is uh, fantastic for me earlier this year, but not great anymore. Most videos tend to get above 100, um, and that was my 10 videos every booktuber should make. Also, the thing that I would say though is that book that video is designed to have kind of a long tail, so it's not meant to perform incredibly well out the gate, it's meant to just kind of keep slowly ticking over, and so. The worst performing video, I guess, is is kind of a tie between that and a video that has just in the early 60s, I think like 63 views, which is my review for Star Summit, the third book in the deck collection. And again, that's kind of a long tail video as well because people will be coming to that video as they read book three or as they finish book two and want to know whether book three is worth reading. So, yeah, um, both of those videos are my least uh, viewed videos this month. Doesn't mean they're the worst. I actually think that the um, Star Summit review is very good because that book is very good. Um, but uh, those ones that got the least views, not particularly bothered. I think they're both getting the reviews that I was expecting, you know? Book three in a self pub series, um, never really going to do incredibly well on views. So, Celevi. Stats. So some of you love this section, some of you hate it. And what we're going to do is talk about um, how the channel has performed this month. So I didn't miss a video this month. Uh, one week this month, I only put up four videos. Um, that was purely just running out of time. Um, and there's a few videos that I feel I cannot miss every week, which is my Monday review, my Thursday wandering in, and my Friday weekly recap. Um, I always try and get those out every single week. Sometimes I don't hit, and in those cases, you know, it doesn't always work. Um, but the two videos that tend to um, be the first ones for me to look at dropping, unfortunately, are the Tuesday and Wednesday videos, which are kind of like topic-based. Um, so it could be a spoiler discussion, could be an interview with an author, um, but most of the time it's like re-ranking top tens or other side of kind of topic based stuff and those videos unfortunately are um harder for me to make so they're the first ones that get dropped sad however true um but even though we only did 19 videos instead of 20 this month has been a great month on the channel uh we have had 10k views which is really good i'm really happy with that 908 watch hours um, and also 10k views if you think about that over the summer I think I was getting like 5k views a month so literally double um, yes I did have two very big videos this month uh, and that probably has contributed um, however I can't schedule those really I mean I did schedule them but you know um, also yeah, so subs wise, subs uh, growth has been better than previous months, which I'm again extremely pleased by. So 68 subs last month. Um, and actually, I'm hoping that that will continue to grow along through this month. Um, my channel started to grow steadily in like October, November, December last year, and then exploded in like January, February, March. Um, so I, honestly, I'm hoping for that again. 
Um, finally, let's go to the money zone. So the money zone is a thing that I am debuting in these videos um, since I got monetized in September. We've now had our first full month of monetization. Um, and I can tell you in October, the channel earned 39 pounds and 58 pence. That will pay for a broken binding book. And that's pretty fucking cool. Like, I know I don't swear very often on this channel and I kind of try not to, but that is pretty fucking cool because I'm making these videos because I love to shout about books at people and my wife is just bored of me talking about them. So I was like, I need to find new people. None of my friends read books. Also, I live in the middle of nowhere and like going to see my friends is actually quite hard. Like seeing people in person requires, you know, a one hour drive, one hour train journey, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't tend to see my friends in person very often. Um, and I don't want to just send them walls of text on WhatsApp. So I was like, right, if I want to talk about books, I'm going to talk about books to people who care about it. I'm going to talk to a community online on BookTube. And that's kind of what I've, I've been hoping to build here. It's just people who want to talk with me about books. So that's why I always encourage you guys to go into the comments and tell me your thoughts, to tell me what you're reading. It's because honestly, I need I need to talk about these books. I need to get it out or else I'm going to explode. So hopefully you enjoy these videos. Uh, and yeah, so £39.58, I mean, for videos I was going to make anyway, is incredible. Like, literally beyond incredible. Like, the fact that that amount of money is coming into me, and the fact that you guys have watched my videos enough to generate that amount of money, excellent. Um, I was anticipating, based on my views and the performance of my videos, to get around £18 a month. So this is over double that, very cool. Again, I know we did have two very highly performing videos last month. Um, I've also been told that YouTube, so I let YouTube place the ads. Originally I was placing all my own ads and um, it, I just was struggling to find time to work through the videos and, and uh, watch them back and, and pick the right places for ads so i have decided to let youtube do it i've then been told that youtube is putting like seven ads in an eight minute video or something insane um so anytime that there's like you know not more than three or five minutes between ads let me know and i will go in and see if i can fix that um i did fix one the other day and then someone told me that they still got an ad in the first four minutes so whatever Anyway, um, I'm hoping to um, really get this down in terms of advertising on the channel. Um, I don't currently have any sponsors. If you want to sponsor me, give me a shout. Uh, my rates are very reasonable. Um, but uh, I do also have a giveaway video that I need to make because um, I've still got the boxes from your paper quest that I need to give away. I was waiting until we had enough entries on the contest um, so I'm probably going to film a short giving those away at some point in the next week. Um, please make sure that you keep your eye on the channel. Um, maybe it'll be in the Friday video next week. So yeah, keep your eye on the channel. I will mention when I'm ready to give those away and uh, I will try and uh, tag people in the video description and things like that. So thanks so much for watching anyway. Um, actually, that is the end of the video. That's it. We're done. We've talked about everything we need to talk about. So, if you've liked this video, please give it a like. If you uh, have enjoyed, in particular, any videos this month, pop down in the comments and let me know. If you want to let me know what you've been reading this month and what you'd recommend for me to read in future, please drop down in the comments below as well. I do know that I have the, the subscriber-submitted TBR that I was planning on making, but my thinking is that November and December are just too busy with buddy reads um, because we've got um, Elantris this month, uh, Wheel of Time this month, Wheel of Time next month, and Wind and Truth next month. So if I need to read a Wheel of Time book and Wind of Truth in the same month, Wind of Truth, Wind and Truth in the same month, I think that might be a little too ambitious. So hopefully uh, you don't mind if I shift the subscriber TBR to next year. Um, and if you do mind, sorry, um, and uh, drop down in the comments. I'm still accepting submissions for that TBR, so you'll have to find the video 
uh, when I'm talking about it because there'll be a link to it there. Or somebody it might drop a link in the comments um, if they're feeling intrepid. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll speak to you tomorrow.